This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the place to go for all of your website needs. Mm, I smell smoke. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And just in case you haven't figured it out yet from the title alone, that smoke is coming from the burning hole in my wallet. As in, I've just ordered an A7R5 and a 24-70 2.8 G Master 2 to go with it. But before I go any further, a housekeeping chore. Happy birthday, Gio. No, no, not you. No, sorry, not you either. I'm talking to Guillaume Vidal. Happy birthday, man. No, no, not that Guillaume Vidal. I mean, Mary's Guillaume Vidal. You know, Mary, the one who thinks every time an Amazon package arrives, it's for her, only to find out it's another lens for you. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I had the same problem. We both really do need to work on that. Anyway, happy 31st birthday. Life is good, Guillaume. Grab it while you can. I think you've chosen wisely. Back to Sony's A7R5. The A7R5 is not magical. The autofocus, even with the new AI chip, is defeatable. Hold that thought. The improved IBIS doesn't do what Panasonic's Lumix GH6, for example, can do. Handheld, multi-shot, computationally blended, pixel-shifting images processed in-camera at that. No matter how often or how much Sony attempts to address it up, the user interface is... Well, it's just terrible. As is the rolling shutter, which most of the time doesn't matter to me at all, but recently, every now and again, for what we do, it does. Someone explained this one to me. Both SD cards still face backwards in their slots. The shutter button remains mushy to the point of despondency. The body's industrial design remains profoundly unimaginative and uninspiring. You get the idea, but... Forget about all of that, because I think the A7R5 is the most complete and performant hybrid camera at anywhere near the price in the market, you know, actually irrespective of price, except for certain use cases. I say this because while the sensor is the same as in the A7R4, A, the improvements in autofocus, image stabilization, and processing power, including a dedicated AI chip for autofocus inside the A7R5, over the A7R4, which in turn are the three most critical technologies adjacent to and in support of the sensor itself, are dramatic. And in some instances, equal or exceed what currently exists in the A9 II and A1. B. This means the A7R5 is able to extract more from those 61 megapixels than ever previously possible, not only far more than the A7R4, but more than that compared to the only other 61 megapixel full-frame cameras on the market of which I'm aware, my Leica M11 and Sigma's FPL. C. This also means, setting aside stills burst rate and rolling shutter performance, that the A7R5 can extract more from its sensor than the A1 can from its 50 megapixel sensor, more than the A9 II can extract from its 24 megapixel sensor, which may or may not matter to you, depending, of course, on use case once again. D. Then there's Sony's $2,300, 685-gram, 24-70 2.8G Master Mark II. It isn't magical either, but in my woefully inadequate, non-real-world testing downstairs in the Bat Studio 1. It is notably better wide open than Tamron's $900, 540-gram, 20-75, 2.8 G2, although most of us will have to pixel peep to see it, and at just about three times the price of the Tamron, which is on sale right now for 800 bucks, it ought to be better. Two, it is not quite as good as Claudia's benchmark $2,100, 
805 gram, barely longer and wider Nikkor Z2472.8 S. Three, sometimes better, sometimes worse than Sigma's $1,100, 835 gram, 24 to 70, 2.8 DGDN art, which is quite an endorsement for the Sigma, it should be said. Although my eye and my gut tell me that in the real world, at normal shooting and viewing distances, the Sony may be as good or better than either of them, which would be quite a feat, especially given the fact that the Sony is lighter and smaller. But we'll have to hold that thought together for a while, because the only way to test this in the real world, at least when we're comparing it to the Nikkor Z, is either with an A7R2 or 3, or wait for a 61 megapixel Z something or other. Which, I imagine, actually is not that far off. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised to see this sensor, or a newer variant of it, not only in a Z something, but quite possibly in a Panasonic Lumix S1R2, or a Leica SL3. But four, here you can see that a pair of my Sigma Primes, the 24 3.5 and 92.8, at roughly the same fields of view, are better than all of them. Which is why I am a Primes kind of guy. Let's look at some of those real world images like this one. The IAF nailed this shot, although frankly, I didn't think it would. I didn't think any camera would. Not only was it a spur of the moment thing, but her eyes were in shadow. And yet, look at this, spot on. With this said, the dedicated AI focusing chip has whetted my appetite for really pushing the envelope. How I really want to test the autofocus, and will once I have my own camera in hand, is with a very particular use case. Call it the Ben Stiller, Edward Norton, keeping the faith street scene like this. Hold that thought too for another video. Let's move to this image. The dynamic range of this sensor is superb. Just like my M11, as one might expect. It's just, wow. Next, high ISO performance. Check out these two images taken at ISO 8000 and 12000 respectively. Very clean. Frankly, given the megapixel count, this surprised me too. As for those of us who insist no one needs 61 megapixels, all I can do is repeat what I've said so many times before. I'd rather crop the crap out of an image with intent than carry more glass, allowing me an image like this. I'll wrap it up this way for now. I am selling my A7 IV, my Tamron 28-75 2.8 G2, and my Leica CL with Sumicron TL 23mm f2 to help defray the cost of the A7R5 and the Sony 24-70 Mark II. I will miss the CL. I acknowledge the utility and value of the A7 IV Tamron combination. It is a tough combination to beat for 99% of us, 99% of the time. But what Claudia and I are left with is the smallest, lightest, most flexible, and performant single camera lens combination possible for what we do across stills and video when that is what we need for our professional work. As for our personal work, well, that's a different story. My Leica SL2 and M11, and a pile of Leica Sigma and Voigtlander primes for them, aren't going anywhere. Nor is Claudia's Nikon Z7 II with her Nikkor Z2472.8 S. These cameras and lenses are too good, too much of a joy in the hand, ultimately too performant and inspiring to be swept aside by specs, and fair enough, clearly superior autofocus. But hey, that's just us. Your mileage may vary, and as always, that's fine. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics, and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash hue for a free trial 
And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code HUE at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comment section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video called via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.